All right, the president is outraged, not about the long Mueller saga that he hopes is finally resolved right now, but about the uh, Dusty Smollett uh, case. Uh, and he calls it outrageous, says that it, it just seems over the top. The host of Liberty File on Fox Nation, Judge Andrew Napolitano, on that. Now, if the feds are involved, uh, Judge, what, what does that mean? What, uh, what's the next step? There's probably two federal investigations. The easier one is of uh, uh, Mr. Smollett himself. Did he engage in mail fraud? Did he put a fraudulent instrument, a fake threat, in the mail? Chicago police say, yes, he did, meaning he basically mailed that letter to himself. Then the federal prosecutors have to decide, is this the type of thing we want to prosecute? Is this a serious federal crime, or was it a state crime with some federal window dressing? That's a, <clears throat> a judgment call that the federal prosecutors will make. If they do prosecute him, he's facing 20 years. He's not going to get a deal like he got uh, from the state's attorney. The second federal investigation is of the state's attorney herself. Now, yes, it was outrageous, and yes, it was unorthodox, but outrage and unorthodoxy are not the legal standard. The legal standard is, was it corrupt? Meaning, did she receive something of value from someone in return for exercising her discretion to have this crazy ending of the case? Something of value means something of monetary value, not a political favor. So I don't think that investigation is going to go anywhere. But we'll see what the feds uh, come it, up with. It really is. Yeah, the, pres the president's... A comment that it's outrageous is one that is shared by almost everybody in the country. I will add to that it is profoundly unjust. But I'm not surprised. The, the political system in Illinois, where prosecutors and judges run for office, where they compete for campaign funds from the same lawyers, where they regularly trade favors uh, with each other, where this type of Smollett event happens all the time, we just don't know about we it because the know, defendant right. is not a celebrity, That's this is what you end up with. Um, let me switch gears a little bit. Uh, last time I was talking to you, you made a little bit of news when you were talking about the president, you know, uh, who's already saying he's been exonerated on, on uh, you know, uh, everything from collusion to obstruction of justice. It was on the latter that you weren't entirely convinced. I'm actually not convinced on either, Neil, because if you read uh, the attorney general's letter carefully, he's a very bright lawyer and he carefully chose his words. He said Bob Mueller was unable, quote, to establish a conspiracy. That means to prove the existence of the conspiracy beyond a reasonable doubt. He must have found some evidence of a conspiracy, because if he found none, that would have made its way into Bill Barr's Wouldn't letter. the conspiracy be all these contacts with Russia? Correct. And whether Correct. there was a quid pro quo, well, that's the unprovable part. Correct. For now, right? Correct. The other issue of obstruction of justice where Mueller sort of kicked the case upstairs, which prosecutors do when, they, when the target is a public official, here the most public of officials, right. uh, the president, there obviously is evidence of obstruction of justice, and there is evidence of no obstruction of justice, and Mueller wanted Barr to make the judgment call, which he did. Now the question becomes, what will the attorney general reveal? Will he reveal the entire report, or will he, as the federal rules of criminal procedure say he should, hold back evidence for people who are not prosecuted. That means the president. When Jim Comey went on national television uh, two, three summers ago and said, we're not going to indict Mrs. Clinton, but we have very serious evidence against her, and here's the evidence, he broke those rules. Mm. You don't reveal evidence about a person not being prosecuted. Will uh, Bill Barr do the same thing, or will he, in the interest of this rapacious appetite that everybody has for what's in there reveal it all. The president says he wants it all out, but the president should look at it because I think some of his opponents are going to have a, a feast on some of the things that's in there. Now, you mentioned the attorney general, and uh, Nancy Pelosi said that the whole bar memo where he outlined, I guess, in three or four pages what was in the now, we know, 300-page-plus report, um, that he was condescending, that the House doesn't need his interpretation. So let me ask you a dumb question. Was it necessary for him to do that? It goes to him. Did it have to go to him? And did he have to give these bullet points as he did? First, I didn't find it condescending at all. And second, his job is to uh, interpret the law. It's not a binding interpretation. He's not the court, but he's the chief federal law enforcement officer. And if Mueller officer. Had took offense to any of his characterizations, by now we would have heard about it. I would think so. Okay. But, but to your other question, yes, it did have to go to him. The report was written for the attorney general, not for the Congress, and not for the president, and not for the public. The attorney general, under the court rules, federal rules of criminal procedure, decides what to do with the report. 
he, so the Attorney really General. These Democrats, and actually, I knew that. I asked you a question. I knew. I do that sometimes. But um, that's a good lawyer. Yeah. Uh, never ask a question unless you know the answer yeah. already. Well, that's the extent of it. I don't know the answer, but I will say this: <laughs> that why were Democrats surprised at that or feigning surprise? That was what he was going to do, right? Some people have interpreted this report to say there is no evidence of collusion and no evidence of obstruction of justice. That's a political interpretation, yeah. not a legal one. The Democrats are looking for what evidence is there so that they can, as they are uh, permitted to do under the Constitution, second-guess Mueller and second-guess Barr as to the meaning and value and quality of that evidence. All right, so if you don't have enough evidence either way, you, you know, uh, you, you make comments like the president's either exonerated or, uh, on this or, or not. It, 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 it makes you wonder about the report itself when all is said and done. Both sides are going to leap on stuff that might yes. not be there. Yes, and if, if both sides don't like what's in the report, however long it is, guess what's below it? That's the millions of pages of actual raw evidence which, by the way, is never revealed publicly when there is no prosecution. You're going to see pressure to have that revealed. So let me just get your take on this. When this comes out, um, when, when Adam Schiff was making the statement that they, he's still convinced of collusion, I'm paraphrasing here, and that prompted Republicans on the panel, you know, to say, you got to go, you got to resign. He's not resigning. But just taking him at his word, Schiff's word, would he be aware of something that Mueller wasn't? I don't know the answer to that, but I think that Congressman Schiff is correct. In that report will be evidence of the existence of a conspiracy, not enough evidence to prove the existence beyond a reasonable doubt. In that report will be evidence of obstruction of justice, interfering with an FBI investigation for a, a personal gain, but not enough evidence to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. Congressman Schiff wants to dwell on that. If he has other sources, since he's the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, he has to decide when and under what circumstances to reveal those sources. So on the collusion part, we do know that the Russians were very interested in mucking around in our election. We do know no question about that, that they had a number of meetings with Trump personnel back in the day. Uh, but that the, 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 the quid pro quo part, where, the, where Trump then, then had to work with them to, to, to to get what they wanted to do, that did not evidence itself, right? There, we have seen no evidence of that. What's in the report, what's in the raw evidence remains to be revealed. All right, and that's a page-by-page -page deal that... That's a long day right there. Yes, it is. Okay. I'm Judge, ready for it, Neil. I know you are. I know, <laughs> I know you are. Judge, thank you uh, very, very much.